Okay, well, another day, another bid. Um, I'm going to begin to explain some things. Uh, basically explaining why I'm saying what I'm saying, other things. And the beginnings of getting into the math, y'all need to understand to decide if, you know, what you're trying to accomplish is in line with what you're choosing to do with your cash. Because at the end of the day, you know, the says videos, we're doing the, the undertone is the buying power experiment, which, you know, we'll have a new set of updated numbers in a few weeks. As, you know, basically it's going to be every two weeks or so as relevant. But in between, we're going to do bits like this where we go through some mechanics and some other things. Um, I'm going to put a link in this vid to uh, math is funds, you know, compound interest and so forth, because you need to know how to do that basic math to reproduce what we're going to go over today. Uh, if there's any questions about, wait, I don't follow this, hey, it, uh, I'll, I'll ask in the comments, I'll explain. Um, I'm going to pick on gold and silver a little bit more because people don't quite follow what I'm saying, you know, they're doing other things, but r rather than get into a bunch of higgledy-jiggledy, I'm just going to go straight through uh, the logic of, uh, of I'm going to basically look at a stacker's logic versus the math of reality, okay? Uh, the, here, you know, I already approved one ounce American Silver Eagle random year. You know, the advertised thing here is that it's 269 over spot. Okay, if we go over here, we'll see if you send them a wire or a check, and a check would be cheaper than a wire, you can pay 23.67 an ounce for small quantities, as little as 22.17, so yeah, you're paying more than that spot, they say. Um, what most of you are going to do is pay 2438, but we're going to be nice and use the 2367 number to help average out across a lot of these. Because some of you might be buying larger quantity, others are going to be paying the credit card. So understand, adjust the numbers accordingly, and uh, you're going to get a link to the math to redo it yourself. So I have 2367 put in here. Now, in this column, in column B, I have the projected prices that you need silver to hit, assuming average inflation. And right now, that matches the high inflation column next to it. So assuming inflation of 3.3%. And then over here in the gray column, we have the price of silver at the time of doing this video, which is approximately $19.44. I'm sure in the time I'm talking it's changing, in the time between now and you watch this video it will have changed, but in order to do math, I have to put in a number. So I'm putting in what I can buy it for this second, what, I, what its spot is this second, and we're doing math based on, okay, in the future it must be worth this much for us to get the 2367 worth of buying power back out of it. This column over here is recognizing that on the average, over decades of data, you expect silver to net a return of 5.29%. Some years are better, some years are worse. There's speculation and bubbles and everything else and all this crazy hullabaloo where it goes up and down and left and sideways and everything else. Okay, if you're a trader and you're going in and out, and scalping and trend trading and doing this, one, why the hell are you stocking the physical commodity? Why aren't you in the electronic market where you can do that at much cheaper spreads and much larger volume using margin and everything else and just go in and out, in and out, capitalize on everything else and stop? You'll make a much better return. And you're going to be settling for cash, but you don't really care because you're increasing your buying power. Okay? Stackers are trying to talk about, you know, you have to get in on a physical metal market. You need physical gold and silver. If you don't have physical silver, there's something wrong with you. Okay. 
fully for them. But let's look at the math of what they're saying gets done. Year one, assuming average inflation, it's got to be 24.45, then 25.26. You know, it just keeps going up. Now, you'll notice a column here with negative numbers. That is buying power. On average, entering physical silver because you pay more than it's worth to buy it. That's the spot. You know, it's like we, as we covered over here, you pay spot plus their fee to buy silver. Doesn't really matter where you're buying silver or gold, you're going to pay a fee. In the case of silver, it's usually a few dollars. In the case of gold, it's $50 plus by the ounce, of course. And smaller quantities result in higher fees. So the less made of money you are, the more you're going to pay for your gold and silver. Assuming the average return of 5.29%, which is what the average is right now over decades, it's going to take 10 years towards the end of 2024. The projected price you need silver to be plus inflation to get your 2367 worth of buying power is going to begin to overlap with the long haul gravitated toward price of silver. Again, we're talking about the stacker's mentality of stack and hoard, stack and hoard, stack and hoard. A trader's mentality is it's high, sell, it's low, buy, repeat. You don't hold on to anything. You move it. A stacker's mentality is it'll be worth more tomorrow. Keep stacking. So you, basically, the act of buying the physical commodity means you're in the red for 10 years. This is money you are not going to need to spend at all for 10 years. You know, they sell you on the idea, well, you're trading your worthless currency for real money. Okay, that's a wonderful sales pitch. The reality is, if you need to tap that savings at any point in the next 10 years, you're going to do so at a loss in terms of buying power. Now, why do I pick on gold and silver so much? I told you in the beginning of this video that I've got two numbers in here for the projected inflation number. I've got a high and I've got an average. Average inflation according to the consumer price index, which doesn't include things like food and fuel and other things which are relevant to buying power but not officially counted in official inflation because they're a case-by-case -case basis. They're different. So you make even and then start to make money in a decade in precious money, excuse me, in, in uh, precious metals, assuming actual change in buying power is in line with official inflation. And what does almost every single stacker argue as the reason they're stacking? Because the consumer price index doesn't include a lot of things, and it's made up, and real inflation's this, and yeah, and so on and so forth. I happen to agree with them. I happen to agree that you should plan on inflation being more than the 3.3% the consumer price index says it is on average. You really should plan on that. But I want you to watch what happens to this column's buying power numbers as I do that. This is the result of averaging the high in column C against the reported median in column B. Watch what happens if I double inflation, which isn't a lot. At no point in the next 50 years do you break even. You have the average I'm talking about of losing 
15 to 25 percent of your spending power. You don't go broke. It doesn't lose money as quickly as the dollar, but you will never be able to sell that silver coin for the amount of buying power you sunk into it in your lifetime. Now, let's start entering the domain of hyperinflation. Let's make the high end triple reported inflation. Averaged over the last hundred years of inflation. Now you're looking at somewhere between 20 and 80 percent loss in buying power. Now let's quadruple it. Doesn't really get much worse. It starts to plateau and average out. Quintuple it. Sectuple it, which would be in line with the higher reported years of inflation in the United States, entering the true domains of hyperinflation. Okay. Again, average price, average return on silk, again, average inflation, average return on silver, if you truly believe in that higher number, resulting, oh dear God, loss in buying power, resulting. Now I could keep raising these numbers and I could keep tweaking them and doing and so on and so forth, but this is what I'm getting at. You're saying you think X is going on, and as a result, Y is going to happen. Okay, why don't you do a strategy that makes sense for what you say is going to happen? The reality is, if hyperinflation really kicks in, it doesn't work to metal heads favor. It will work against most stackers because they need the price of gold and silver to be moving that much more to break even. They basically have thrown the mother of Hail Marys on an oh dear God law arm. The percents that they need on average for the numbers to really work out towards what they say is going to happen are 10 to 30 percent APR on a commodity that gets either just over 5% or just over 6% APR. Is that a little better than official inflation? Yes. Over the course of about a decade of your life, it manages to overtake official inflation. But is that a true increase in buying power? According to the official numbers, which is what we're using in the experiment, yes. Is it anywhere in line with what you would have got almost anywhere else? No. Is it the most unliquid position you could be in in terms of buying power? Yes. At the end of the day, it comes down to math. This is how I make my decisions. You know, the, it basically I got in a little argument back and forth with Silverbud about, well, you, you say what you get into. Yeah, I do. I'm in the Forex market right now. I had a very interesting week charting. Uh, I've had an interesting time uh, scalping certain commodities. I have been, which you can do through a lot of Forex brokers, but that's technically not the Forex market. Um, it's been an interesting time to short the Euro. There have been some short opportunities in the Aussie recently. The Aussie may be in the process of correcting to go long again. It's a little too soon to tell. You know, it's so, but I do my decisions based on math. I go, okay, if I do X, what needs to happen for me to benefit from it? And then I look at the odds of that happening. Right now, what the gold and silver people say is going to happen, and what they're choosing to do don't line up. I just walk you through the math of that. 
The base math of what I did here was the compound interest thing, which I'm going to link you to. Okay. Then what you do is, I've set it out in longhand here, but you can just use the math and put in x years out, y years out, and so on, because the formulas are written to the n. And the n is the number of integers. So um, you don't have to write it longhand. For the purpose of doing this video, I, I did it in a nice spreadsheet in longhand in a one-year increment. But really, you can just set up a spreadsheet with a x years out, I need y prize, I, and, and so on and so forth. And you, uh, what I did here was I have one value, which is average inflation. That's based on the consumer price index numbers, which is an average price change of 3.3%. We have inflation of, on average, over the last 100 years, 3.3%. So I adjusted the price by 3.3% times the number of integers we've gone out. Then I had another value, which is high end, where I think inflation is actually going to be. And you always want to overcompensate a little bit in that. Um, you know, if you feel you want to double it, if you feel you want to use 15%, if you feel you want to use 5% inflation, my suggestion is sit down, do the math, and figure out for your household, on average, how much does your cost of living go up for where you live. You know, do your own inflation for your own household, for your own family. And then my honest assessment and suggestion would be double it, you know, overestimate a little bit assume that things may get worse in the future before they get better. Not an unreasonable guess. And then what I do is I have another column where I take whatever I'm getting into and I look at historically how has it performed. Historically, what the fuck has it done? Okay, what's its average rate of return? Through all the highs and lows and peaks and troughs and everything else, what's the average price change? Is the average price change positive or negative? What is the average improvement or loss of value? You know, if overall in the long haul it's going down, I'm going to look for a good short opportunity. If overall in the long haul it's going up and inflation's pushing it up and so on, you know, I'm going to look to short when it's shorting and long most of the time because a good long haul is just a good long steady and run. But I'm also going to look at the cost and the fees associated and interest on my thing. Anyways, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, but then you take the price it's projected to be divided by the average of those two numbers you have, official inflation and your high-end high inflation. And that's all in parentheses and you minus one. And that's going to tell you the law of average statistical Assuming you've done your research right and all these numbers you put into this equation are right, resulting buying power over, over that time scale from that transaction. It's not rocket science, people. If the number is negative, it's probably not the place to stick your number. You see me to stick your money. If the number is positive, then do some risk assessment and decide how much money you can afford to risk on this being completely and totally wrong. So if it works out in your favor, you're good. If it blows up in your face, you didn't bet the farm and you can still do okay. This is probably the most simplest and underutilized concept in doing. And it's not what metalheads are using right now. The metalheads are using the the sky's going to fall, the world's going to come to an end, and when the shit hits the fan, you'll be sorry. And then the people who don't subscribe to that ballpark aren't doing math. They're assuming the price was less in the past, it's more now, therefore I made money. No, you got to do some math. Um, 
next vid, which is probably going to be in two weeks because of all the other shit, I'll try and do it next week if I can, but I got a lot of shit going on right now. Uh, well, in two weeks, there'll be an update. If I can do another intermediary one in there, but again, I'm trying, I am trying to answer the question without breaking the law and giving, giving, um, financial advice that would sue me, you know, the base skills you need to go spot these things on your own and go, oh, that's an interesting sales pitch, but it doesn't help me. Um, <laughs> because what most people do is some guru tells them, hey, here's my house of cards number. See, isn't it great? And they go, yeah, that looks great on the surface. You know, it's in the math we have here, I have silver going from 1944 to $277.19 over the next 50 years, give or take. Okay, actually over the next, because yeah, that, that'd be 2065, so yeah, that is the next 50 years. Because it's 1944 right now, and it's the average thing, yeah, you'd expect it to be a few hundred bucks in 50 years. Statistically speaking, law of average thing. So that's an oh dear God increase in price. But I'm going to tell you right now, the possibility, the very likely possibility of that happening, despite being 20 times the price, is effectively doubling your spending power if everything goes perfect and inflation actually slows down a little bit to losing about 15 to 25% of your buying power, assuming we keep having inflation, things keep going a little sideways, and everything else goes on. You tell me what's more probable, okay? That the U.S. dollar is going to get stronger over the next 50 years, and so work out in your favor because you got silver? Or that we're going to keep doing more of the same stupid shit we've done. And it's going to be business as usual for the next 50 years. Or, if you prefer, all the shit's going to hit the fan. In which case, you can lose upwards of 90% of your buying power for getting into gold and silver. This is what the math says, people. Think about what you think is going to happen and act accordingly. I don't think the shit's going to hit the fan. I don't think we're going to stop doing business as usual. So I'm not counting on the dollar getting stronger. I'm counting on more shift, more things, and I'm making the decision accordingly. Basically, I believe everything, with the exception of the world's going to come to an end, that the gold and silver bugs say is going to happen. I believe we're going to undergo hyperinflation and all these things are going to happen. But then I look at their, their plan of attack for this mathematically, not emotionally. I don't look at an ethos argument where they're saying there's some grand high poobah and I should just blindly listen to them as the grand high poobah. I don't follow a pathos argument of them trying to make me afraid. I follow a lothos argument. I sit down, I go, that's an interesting hypothetical world. Let me do the math on it. Well, assuming that world is true, and I have to admit, you make a compelling case for that world being true, the lothos argument says, I should do the exact opposite of what you say because of what you say is going to happen. And this is the way you should handle your money and invest. Don't listen to what anybody's selling you at all, including me. Do the math. And on that phone call, I gotta go.